Hello everyone. Today we'll be discussing environmental problems in polar region. The discussion will be focused on general understanding of the polar ecosystem and the environmental problems will be discussed under the subheadings of atmospheric challenges, hydrological issues, biodiversity loss, and challenges to human community. As you all understand, the polar regions are connected with the rest of the world as part of the larger Earth system through common oceans, common atmosphere, common ecological and social systems. In fact, they are vital constituents of the global climate system. The interactions of cryosphere, oceanic changes and the, their magnitude of the impact are key issues of climate change for the polar region the planet and its people. Environmental changes in Arctic and Antarctic affects outside the polar regions in two ways. Number one, physical and ecosystem changes will have socio-economic impact for the entire world. Second, the process will impact global climate and the sea level. Let's continue further. The polar ecosystem includes two subsystems, North Polar Arctic region and the South Polar Arctic region. The North Polar region is approximately 14 kilometer, million kilometer square of which 80% is under Russian Federation and Canada. 16% by Nordic countries and 4% USA. In terms of ecosystem, consists of three main parts, the high polar desert areas, the tundra, which is vast open plain, and the forest tundra. Besides its biotic resources, the Arctic contains huge deposits of oil, gas, and minerals. In the Arctic region of North America and Russia, there is recent upsurge of mining and associated infrastructure development. This is also causing, or in fact, putting an extra pressure on the land, wildlife, and water. People living in the Arctic zone are of numerous ethnicity. Inuit in Greenland, Sami mainly in Hivit, Sweden, Norway, and Finland, Nenet, Kanti in some parts of Russia, and Sami in northern parts of Russia, Inuit and Yupik in Alaska. The Antarctic region is governed by 1958 Antarctic Treaty, which establishes the continent as a peaceful and cooperative international research zone. The treaty also declares the continent as the world's first nuclear weapon-free zone with 70 permanent research stations in 20 of 29 countries. Although no indigenous inhabitants, but there are both permanent and summer only research stations. The extent of polar regions, you can very well look here, the Arctic region and the surrounding complete land area, the continents, the Greenland, North America, and parts of Europe and Russia. You can see here the Antarctic, uh, the southern polar region, the western part and the eastern part of Antarctica, and the all surrounding oceans. That's your southern ocean. Environmental problems are put here, categorized into four, atmospheric challenges, hydrological issues, biodiversity loss, and challenges to human community. Let us come to environmental challenges first air pollution, increasing temperatures, and ozone depletion. Air pollution is a very important area of concern. The levels of air pollution is so high in Arctic that Arctic haze has become a major issue. The haze aerosols are mainly sulfurous, sulfurous originating from combustion of fossil fuel in Europe and Asia. The radionuclides are also traced as the fallout of nuclear testing. Some persistent toxic substance that travel through air masses and becomes long-distance contaminants. 
for these areas. Due to harsh climate conditions, the polar regions create a sink for these substances such as POPs, the persistent organic uh, pollution. Uh, I'm continuing further here. Air pollution has been affecting Arctic system from both remote and local sources. The complete web of environmental and atmospheric interconnections has influenced the air pollution levels. One report has suggested that the changes in atmospheric pollutant, such as aerosol particles and tropospheric ozone has affected the atmospheric radiation balance, which contributes to the Arctic climate warming. Ozone depletion. As per the UN reports, the tropospheric ozone also led to Arctic warming with most of the ozone resulting from the methane oxidation and mid in mid and northerly latitudes. The key atmospheric issues in the Arctic and Antarctic areas are the depletion of stratospheric ozone layer and the long range transport of air pollutants. The depth and area of duration of Antarctic ozone hole have steadily increased. There has been more than 15% decline in the ozone levels since 1970. The process of ozone destruction is facilitated by chlorine and fluorine that are results of anthropogenic activities. You can look at this graph, which has been shared from uh, NASA Ozone Watch. It's talks about the size of the ozone hole from 1980 to 2014. And you can see the, the, the kind of uh, size it was here in this uh, 1980s early decade and how it has fluctuated and of course massively increasing to the present levels. The most severe case of ozone depletion was first documented in 1985 by British Antarctic Survey scientist Joseph Farman and his team. Interestingly, the 1969 research by Crutzen and Melunina for, I mean, the team has got Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1995 for reporting the uh, connection of ozone and its reaction with the nitrogen oxide. Increasing temperatures is a, another major area. Due to global climate change, the atmospheric temperature is showing marked warming trends. This is causing spectacular loss of ice shelves and an increase in the cover of terrestrial vegetation. It has been concerned at international level that the global warming is causing impact on glacier and ice sheets of Antarctica. Since 1960, there has been an increase of six degrees Celsius of winter average temperature in an Arctic peninsula. Number of recent events in the Arctic indicates new extremes in the Arctic climate system. Annual Arctic surface temperature for which the past five years, 1418 on the baseline of 80 and 2010, that has exceeds any year since 1900. Hydrological problems. It, it uh, is one of the major area of concern particularly. Arctic holds much of the world's freshwater supply. The two main permanent ice fields are ice pack of Arctic Ocean, which is 8 million kilometers square and Greenland 1.7 million kilometers square. And they together holds the 10% of freshwater for the world. And these both pour 42 cubic kilometers uh, freshwater in Arctic Ocean annually. Movement of Arctic waters play a significant role in global ocean regime and regulating the global climate. The indigenous communities of polar areas traditionally dependent on marine resources. However, there are growing concerns about negative impact of development activities on the ecology here. The contamination is another pressure on the Arctic marine environment. The annual spring influx carries contaminants and these contaminants are bioaccumulated in sea mammals and in turn consumed by the Arctic people, which has become the part of the food chain. If we look at this,
ocean dumping of radioactive solids waste is causing another area of concern oil spills are also important threats in arctic region the largest oil spill occurred in 1990 leaking 6 lakh liters of fuel in the ocean ice sheet melting and sea level rise are the impact of global warming greenland ice sheet surface melt area has increased by 16% from 1980s and it is projected that the sea level may rise from 4 inches to 3 feet by 2100 As per one of the IPCC reports about a quarter of carbon dioxide released by human activities is taken up by the oceans. Biodiversity loss. Arctic has a considerable biodiversity. There are a good amount of pop population of plankton in the marine environment. Since 1950s There have been major crash in the population of commercially important species such as cod and salmon in Canada and Greenland and herring in Norwegian water. For centuries the arctic has attracted hunters of for mammals such as whales and seal walrus polar bear and otter. A major decline in marine mammal including beluga whale walrus harbor seal and fin whales have been observed capelin stock of barents sea collapsed due to overfishing resulting in the starvation of thousands of harp seals in 1990s following that norway had to ban the capelin fishing in 1993 puffin have been another such casualty they fed their young ones mainly on herring fish by 1995 it was half of its former size because Puffing chicks starved to death due to overfishing of herring fish since 1970s. Other pressure on Arctic biodiversity are climate change habitat, climate change, habitat loss, and fragmentation. Global warming is also causing vegetation zone to shift as vegetation attempt to migrate northward. this vegetation zone shift will also have great impact on the breeding of many birds and mammals let us see the biodiversity loss in the antarctic areas the antarctic terrestrial ecosystem is structurally simplistic with small number of species the knowledge of southern ocean marine diversity is confined largely to the continental shelves and slopes the harvest of sea and whale was it alarming problem but over the years because of the problems it has been banned later fish and krill krill is actually a tiny plankton are facing threat due to over exploitation of high level illegal catch of patagonian toothfish in the southern oceans has become a major concern as it threatens the sustainability of stock population for some seabird population long line fisheries are also a threat for example albatross and petrel species have been listed as vulnerable this led to albatross and petrel species on a protected list in 19, 1997 let's proceed further changes in the distribution and composition of terrestrial flora and fauna are due to warming mainly in the past 3 decades gantu and chinstrap penguin have explained their range southward in the peninsula in the past 50 years in correlation with the pronounced regional warming according to the report of national geographic news over the past 50 years the population of antarctic emperor penguin has declined by 50% One of the life forms in Antarctica is microscopic worm called nematodes. Dinosaur and ecologists in the US research station remark that these soil invertebrate and microbes reduce CO2 10 times greater than annual carbon combustion from fossil fuel. The ocean and forest performs crucial role in the carbon sink. these nematodes therefore would play a significant role in the global warming scenario 
challenges to human community. In the past few decades, Arctic has emerged as an important geopolitical region composed of eight surrounding nations. The Arctic region encompasses around 14 million kilometers square area with a population density of 3.5 million and density of 0 0.26 kilometers square. Seven of the eight Arctic countries rank high on the Human Development Index. The Antarctica has no permanent population, but only the research, only the research centers. The climate driven environmental changes are affecting local ecosystem and influencing travel, hunting, fishing, gathering practices. This has a consequence on people's livelihood, cultural practices, economies and self-determination. Permafrost warming has reduced the reliability of permafrost for natural refrigeration. In some cases, these changes have reduced access to and consumption of locally resourced foods. An initial study showed that the toxicity and the contamination has entered the food chain of the Arctic ecosystem. It was found that the levels of POP is three to 10 times higher in the blood of indigenous people who consume marine mammals. It was reported in Government of Canada uh, documents that the fear of contaminant is forcing people to change their traditional diet habits. Indigenous communities of Inuit in Greenland, Nunavut in Canada have become minorities in their own homelands due to immigration as a result of exploitation of minerals, petroleum and tourism. With all these problems, with all these problems, the polar regions are still struggling to manipulate to the international level treaties have been signed and all the concerned countries are working on them, but still a lot needs to be done. The polar regions will be massively different in future as compared to today. The degree and nature of different differences will depend on the rate and magnitude rate and magnitude of global climate change regular long term monitoring intensive field observations both at surface and throughout the troposphere some from sources that are the mid latitudes and other parts to the reception to the recep receptors that in the polar region would allow characterization of pollutants processing during transport air pollution and their effects. The mechanism and processes controlling atmospheric pollution in the polar regions. It requires more coordinated observations of polar atmosphere dynamics, ocean ice atmosphere interactions, the atmospheric, atmospheric compositions and also chemical and physical processes, especially the deposition are significant. There is a need for understanding socioeconomic interactions, Arctic air pollution, and local population and ecosystem. This, the multiple level understanding and the contribution from all concerned people, the humanity and the countries, everything matters and every day, every every governance at national international level have to contribute to the right level of policy making to the ground level only with all that efforts we can see that which area and where the where we can meet with the with the with mitigating such issues you can also refer further uh, the ipcc reports the shindel uh, paper multiple UNEP reports for further and a further discussion further discussion on these topics. Happy learning and I'm sure this will help you this will help you in understanding the complete uh, problems in the polar ecosystem. <laughs>